The American sweet chestnut was once a prominent species in the forests of southern Ontario. It was one of the greatest timber and nut producing species in its range. The tree was an important timber species and also provided a nutritious food source for humans, livestock and wildlife. In the early 1900s, the species was almost completely wiped out by the devastating effects of a lethal pathogenic disease. Today, few mature trees remain and the American chestnut, its heritage and genetic adaption for Canadian climate are at risk of being lost forever. The Canadian Chestnut Council is working hard to aid in the recovery of this legendary giant of the forest. The American chestnut is a nut producing deciduous tree that once comprised a significant 25% of the mixed forests in its range. The American sweet chestnut was native to the Carolinian zone of southern Ontario and also extended throughout a vast range in the United States. It thrived on well-drained soils along the north shore of Lake Erie. It was a forest climax canopy species that was often referred to as the redwood of the eastern forests. The American chestnut was a magnificent tree. In fact, we have no deciduous tree in Canada today to equal the native chestnut as it once was. The American chestnut is a prolific bearer of nuts. The female fruit is a spiny shell that will encase one to three very tasty plump nuts if pollinated. The nuts develop throughout late summer, the burrs opening and falling to the ground near the time of first fall frost. One mature tree was known to produce 10 to 12 bushels of nuts per year. That equals 3,000 to 6,000 nuts a year. In comparison, oaks produce less than 2,000 nuts per year and do so only sporadically. This incredible and nutritious crop played a significant role to animals and people alike. A very important tree for wildlife, this tree provided much of the fall ground forage, known as mast, for species such as white-tailed deer and wild turkey and other nut-loving species. Black bears were known to eat the nuts to fatten up for the winter and thrive on its highly nutritious properties. Today, the nuts are important to capture the genetics of resistance to the blight. Volunteers use the nuts to grow American chestnut trees for further testing against the blight. Prior to the turn of the century, the American chestnut played an important role in the culture, livelihoods and economy of landowners and farmers. A great value of the species was as timber used to construct houses, barns and fine furniture. The wood is straight grained, durable and rot resistant. The rot resistance can be compared to that of the western red cedar. In fact, some split rail fences and other farm structures constructed in the last century are still standing today. The American chestnut was also a tannin producing tree and it alone supplied over 50% of all plant-based tannins to the leather processing industry. So what happened to this great tree? Unlike other endangered species, the enemy of the chestnut is neither man nor habitat destruction, but probably the most lethal forest tree pathogen ever to have found its way to North America. Well, the, the pathogen that causes chestnut blight is a fungus, and it's a fungus that attacks the tree. Uh, it's called Cryphonecteria parasitica, and we call it parasitica because it's a parasite of the trees themselves. Um, it's a pathogen that we think came into North America from Asia, and because it found a, a new host that it hadn't seen before in its own evolution, it causes a very severe disease, and that's why it kills the trees so quickly and then spread throughout North America. The chestnut pathogen is well adapted to causing the epidemics that it does. Uh, there are two spore forms, and these spore forms can be transmitted both in the air, in the rain, on insects, and also by uh, several bird species that we know of. When the spores arrive at a tree, they'll get in through a naturally occurring wound or opening that's there, and then they quickly cause a canker uh, that begins to encircle, and usually within about four years, that canker will kill that tree. No form of effective control was ever found, and by 1947, scientists watched the remaining mature trees in Ontario all but perish. In all the years of forest industry, no devastation or disease has equaled this destruction. By the time a farmer saw a few wilted yellow leaves on his trees, the fate of the tree was sealed. Even when it was noted 10 kilometers away, it was too late. Nothing could be done. Even today, no forester, no scientist or government would be able to stop the wave of destruction. Now listed as an endangered species under Ontario's Endangered Species Act, the American chestnut exists today thanks to its capacity to grow shoots from the bases of the remnant stumps from trees that have succumbed to the blight. 
These shoots sprout from the old stump at ground level and are occasionally able to live long enough to produce nuts themselves. The sprouts are significant because they carry the genetic makeup of the parent tree. It is unusual for the young trees to get much taller than 12 to 15 feet or live longer than 10 years before succumbing to the blight themselves. Even if a young tree should reach the flowering stage, it may not have another chestnut tree close enough to reproduce with. This is a common problem for the chestnut because it is not known to self-pollinate. The cycle of sprouting and blight infection continues in Ontario today. The Canadian Chestnut Council formed in 1988. This volunteer organization promoted the restoration of the chestnut and in 1994 became a registered charitable organization. Both the Canadian Chestnut Council and American Chestnut Foundation in the United States are working on a backcross breeding program to attain the desired objectives. In Ontario, the Canadian Chestnut Council works closely with plant experts from the University of Guelph, who are also dedicated to establishing a method to effectively recover the American chestnut. The university also created a national recovery plan for the species and provides leadership, research assistance, data analysis, and technical support to all aspects of chestnut recovery programs. Hybridization can provide a very good chance of producing a timber-type chestnut that can survive in the forest despite the blight. It is the aim of the Canadian Chestnut Council to produce such a tree. Um, we hope to breed a uh, forest type of American chestnut, which would be uh, blight resistance and Canadian origin, which would allow Canadian Council to uh, reintroduce American chestnut into Canada's Carolinian forest. Uh, we know that we found a resistant tree is, if you look at uh, five trees in a row, uh, most of them infected, but one is not, then we know that one is resistant at that point. But time will tell. Science suggests that a blight-resistant hybrid chestnut tree with the physical characteristics of the American chestnut can be produced in about three tree generations, or approximately 18 to 20 years. The resulting trees will provide handsome, rot-resistant lumber for fence posts, furniture, firewood, and other uses. Returning it to the forest will affect the natural environment with all of the positive attributes that trees bring to the biosphere. Wildlife will benefit from the tree as a source of both food and shelter. The Canadian Chestnut Council operates nursery plots where pure and hybrid trees are grown. The first breeding plots were established through the generous offering of acreage made available to the Canadian Chestnut Council. One of the breeding sites was donated by the Tim Horton Children's Foundation in Brant County. The camp, called Tim Horton's Onondaga Farms, provides a great location where campers, students, and visitors of all ages are able to learn about chestnut recovery while visiting the research plot, during daily activities and on special tours. The second plot is located at Riverbend Farms, a wholesale tree nursery located near Aylmer, Ontario. Each location offers slightly different conditions that lend themselves to the breeding research. This involves a complicated scientific breeding project. The University of Guelph provides inoculum for testing resistance. University and council volunteers work together to inject the serum into branches and trunks of test trees in June. The resulting lesions are measured over the summer. Small lesions indicate high resistance and large lesions suggest poor resistance to the chestnut blight. The more resistant trees will be used for subsequent generations. Special breeding design has included the use of many different Canadian tree lines to promote genetic diversity and local adaptability. The goal is to eventually reintroduce the species to its native range in the forests of southern Ontario. Why do we care about the future of the American chestnut? For one, it is our only native chestnut and if lost, can never be replaced. Wildlife will benefit directly from the food and shelter provided by this species. It is important to the living things around it. All life is connected and largely interdependent. It can be a valuable tree to humans. If returned to forests and woodlots, it could again add to our economy through cash crops of nuts and timber. With the American chestnut, we have a chance to make a difference, but this can only be accomplished with continued scientific research and human support. This is uh, something um, really unique. We're trying to restore something that, um, that's gone almost, 
So we want to put it back to the Canadians, to those kids that come in here to see what we're doing, how we're going to accomplish our objective. The Canadian Chestnut Council recognizes the importance of education and engaging the public. In today's global state, where so many species are under pressure due to the actions of humans, it is increasingly important for all of us to learn about ways that we can have positive impacts on the environment rather than just negative ones. The Canadian Chestnut Council is currently booking presentations for audiences who are interested in chestnut recovery. We are also developing resources for teachers and students. We believe that education is the best tool for providing an understanding of how we can all do our part to benefit endangered species such as the American chestnut. Engaging people and communities is also a priority. The Council has been glad to work with conservation authorities and stewardship councils to engage volunteers in restoration projects that include the American chestnut. Since plants provide the basic foundation for most ecosystems, it is important for us to care and to act. The exciting thing about the American chestnut is that we do have a chance to make a difference. The Canadian Chestnut Council needs your help and support to continue pursuing its mission. By becoming members of the Canadian Chestnut Council, you and your family can assist with the efforts to save the American chestnut. Your contributions will go directly towards efforts to recover the species, and you will be kept informed of progress and special events through our website and newsletter. For more information on ways that you can help, or to book a presentation for your group, please visit us at our website at www.canadianchestnutcouncil.org.